uh, scientific project in history. And that was paid for, of course, by American taxpayers, 15% uh, contribution from uh, Europe. And uh, so understandably, the public, Congress, and even the astronomical community was very unhappy about that. And so astronomy went through a difficult period. You could not open a newspaper without NASA and astronomers being trashed. And this is one of the, my favorite political cartoons. Um, where if you look at the orientation of the shuttle, you will realize exactly what the, <laughs> the, the cartoon is trying to say. But really, astronomy was in a serious $2 billion funk <laughs> at this time. What to do? It turns out that the spherical aberration, the mismatch, was um, due to an incorrect figure in the two mirrors. Turns out that the telescope has two mirrors, the main primary concave mirror, which reflects light up to a secondary mirror, and they have to be matched perfectly in order to produce an ideal image. And mistakes were made in the optical testing that caused the figure of the mirrors to produce this mismatch, and there was no easy way to correct it. So the, correction, uh, the question was what to do. How are we going to fix this $2 billion project and make something out of it? And it was the role of our institute to try to uh, keep the, uh, not to keep the lid on it, but to work with Congress, who uh, really had their knives out for it, understandably, and, and the American people. Well, fortunately, it was always foreseen that the telescope should be visited by the shuttle every three to four years to update the uh, the telescope. After all, there are reaction wheels, gyroscopes, batteries, solar arrays, uh, computers, detectors, instruments that decay up there. And in fact, one of the primary reasons for the existence of the space shuttle was space telescope. So we had an option, and that is we could go up and try to fix the telescope. There were many people who thought that the problem was su sufficiently serious that the telescope would have to be brought back down to Earth to be worked on. We knew that, and we knew that given the political feeling at the time, if we brought the telescope down to Earth, it would stay there. It would never be launched again. And so we worked with NASA to come up with a way that astronauts could actually introduce special optical elements into the optical light path that would correct the optics of the telescope. And this is the same thing that you do with your Nikon single lens reflex, right? And you know, if you see these big zoom lenses, each one of them consists of about seven or eight distinct pieces of glass, and they all correct different optical aberrations, you know, that uh, have fancy names, pincushion distortion, coma astigmatism, and, and the like. And so what we realized was if we could go up to the telescope and insert several optical elements into the light path, we could correct the spherical aberration, make the telescope operate like new. Fortunately, at that time, uh, we got into a mode in which within three years, we diagnosed the problem, we developed the uh, optics for it, and then sent astronauts in 1993 up to the first servicing mission to correct this problem. And since part of the success of the telescope really has uh, depended upon these servicing missions, I want to uh, show you, oh, it looks like, okay, I don't have to click. I'm going to show you a synopsis of some of the films that have been given to me, high def, by the astronauts of some of the servicing missions. There have been five servicing missions to go up and essentially renovate the telescope. So there's a launch. You get uh, eight and a half minutes, as the astronauts call it, of riding the fire. Two and a half minutes where you have the solid rocket boosters. And notice the upper right, boom. You just see the flame out of the uh, solid rocket. Then shuttle goes up, rendezvous with the telescope. That takes a day, and for the next 10 days, basically, there are teams of astronauts, two at a time, that go out each day and do the spacewalks to essentially service the telescope. So what we had to do to correct the spherical aberration was take out one of the instruments, the size of a grand piano there, which you see being removed, and insert the optical elements that would uh, correct the spherical aberration. 
there's always one astronaut who is a free walker, a free floater, uh, uh, connected basically to the shuttle by a cable so they don't uh, uh, float away, and the other astronaut whose uh, feet are uh, stuck into the uh, remote, uh, what we call it the Canada arm, um, the extended arm. And so the two of them work together, open the doors at the back end of the telescope to get in there where the instruments are, the computers, the gyroscopes and the like, and either take them out and then put in uh, replacements. And so here you see a bunch of yellow handrails. There are 95 of them. They're the ones that the free-floating astronaut uh, grips onto. And I should say, let me stop uh, because there's some stories here. See if I can just stop this. <coughs> there, there are interesting stories that the astronauts uh, tell. First of all, um, you're subject to cosmic rays when you're up there. And it turns out that your eye is a good detector for certain cosmic rays. And so some of the astronauts are particularly sensitive to the cosmic rays, which is they hit your retina cause a, a little yellow. Lot. And some of them have a very hard time sleeping because all the time uh, you have these yellow flashes occurring in, in your eyes. Um, other astronauts um, maintain that they have really wild, vivid dreams when they're in space. And so it's just uh, one of these interesting things that uh, may occur in, in weightlessness. And one of the really interesting consequences that most of the free floaters talk about is you have a fear of falling. It's really fascinating. It's something that I've never understood because I give lectures with the astronauts a lot. And uh, once I was with Claude Nicolier who was commenting on the fact that when he was a free floater he could not, he could not work his way around the telescope just by pushing off because he had this sensation that he was falling. Now, even though you're hooked to the uh, shuttle with a cable, it, it's one of these instincts that you uh, just can't uh, overcome. And in fact, on several occasions, we've come very close, perilously, to having to stop an EVA, that's um, a spacewalk, extravehicular activity, sorry about the jargon, because uh, in the seven hours of the spacewalk, one of the astronauts, Steve Smith, found himself grasping on the uh, handrail so much that his arm started to cramp up. And he couldn't uh, uh, finish the swap out of the instrument. And so they had to do some quick change around, and we almost lost an important instrument on Hubble just because of this fact. In any event, this fear of falling is something that they all find that they, they can't resist just constantly holding on to the uh, telescope, even though if they didn't, right, they'd be in the same orbit and simply <laughs> circling the Earth together. Whoops, well, let's go back. Um, I'm actually doing this uh, on, a, on a borrowed computer here. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm, well, Let's see if I can uh, move it back to, will it allow me? Yeah, okay. Here's the astronauts coming out of the airlock, okay, for one of the uh, spacewalks. And these things are really choreographed in great detail, because half the time you're in dark, you're in the dark side of the Earth, half the time you're in the bright side. And so the lighting is different, and also, it affects the heating of the telescope, which expands and contracts. And so some of the things have to be done when you're in daylight. And other times, it's very difficult to get things in and out of a tight fit if you find yourself uh, where the uh, telescope's in the dark side of the Earth and uh, the contraction has uh, caused a, a very tight fit. So it is a really interesting choreography that they go through in doing all of this servicing. Uh, on several occasions, and I haven't been uh, watching up here, there was, yeah, here it is, a famous incident where they couldn't get to the instrument because they couldn't get a bolt. Uh, and so they actually had to do something that was not according to procedure, and Mike Massimino actually had to rip off this handhold in order to uh, get to the instrument, which is a STIS, a very important instrument on the telescope, uh, in order to uh, repair it because its electronics had failed. And on one occasion, they were able to repair an instrument that was not 
designed to be repaired in space, it required unloosing 128 bolts. And they had to take all these bolts, they couldn't let them float around, stick them in a bag, uh, and then uh, do the replacement. So, um, in fact, the servicing of Hubble Space Telescope really, uh, uh, apart from the moon landing, of course, the Apollo program, was one of the great successes of NASA. Um, they let the telescope go after eight to 10 days, uh, open up the uh, shutter on the uh, telescope, and then land the shuttle. So there have been, as I say, five of these that have uh, really worked miracles and kept that telescope in business. And after the first one, where we had the spherical aberration, excuse me, and you see the image of a galaxy taken with a telescope during this three year period when it suffered the optical aberration, and then after it had been corrected, what that image looked like. So in fact, the first servicing mission basically returned the telescope so it was operating as it should be perfectly and all the discoveries that have come from that time, after that time, uh, are due to the great work of the astronauts in, in fixing this for collaboration. Um, well, the telescope's done lots of things. Um, uh, we scientists, of course, work with the data in terms of the public. Uh, the legacy of the telescope to many people, appropriately, there are these beautiful images that say something about the interesting astrophysics that uh, we're looking at. So here you see some examples, and I'm gonna focus only on one of them in a 